Hello friends, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to be doing another book haul because it's been, I don't know, I want to say it's been at least six weeks since the last time that I posted a book haul. And since then, I have accumulated a lot of things. I'm not entirely sure how many books are sitting next to me. I want to say it's anywhere between 30 and 40 books, but I am just so excited about all of the things. There are some books I've received recently that I am very excited about. But before we do jump into the book haul today, I wanted to take a second to thank today's video sponsor, which is a new sponsor on this channel, and it's Fume. It's cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. And Fume looks at the problem in a different way, because not everything in a bad habit is wrong, so why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning, flavored air device that does just that. Because instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural, you don't have to plug this thing into a charger, and instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. So instead of harmful chemicals, they use all-natural, delicious flavors. So instead of the bad, Fume is actually good, and it's a habit that can help you break your bad habits and you don't have to feel guilty about using it. Something that I really like about this is that on the back of it, there's a little adjustable airflow dial so you can move it around and it makes that amazing sound with like the magnets in there. I really like the adjustable airflow because you can adjust how much of this you're wanting to take in at a time. And the magnets are also really nice for fidgeting to give your fingers something to do. I'm not gonna lie, when I first got this thing, I wasn't really sure what to expect, but I was actually really surprised by the quality of this thing. Like this thing has some weight to it. It's perfectly balanced. It's easy to hold in your fingers. I actually really just love holding on to this. Like the real wood is so nice. The shape of it is cool. And I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about the different flavors, but I was really impressed. It's a lot more flavorful and strong than I was expecting it. And it tastes very fresh. Right now I have in the flavor of the orange vanilla. And this one is a favorite actually. I wasn't even sure if I would like this one, but I really like the orange vanilla. I know that the crisp mint is a fan favorite, but I've actually really been enjoying the raspberry lemon as well as the sparkling grapefruit. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers, and there are thousands of success stories, so there's no reason that can't be you. So join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits. By picking up the journey pack today, you can head to tryfume.com slash gabbyreads or scan the QR code on the screen and use the code gabbyreads to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use my code gabbyreads to save an additional 10% off your order today. Thank you so much to Fume for sponsoring today's video and now let's get into the book haul. All right, so kicking off this book haul, I wanted to show you the eight books that Atria Books has sent to me recently. Atria is incredible and they've been publishing some really exciting things recently, so let me tell you about a few. One book they've recently sent me is Interesting Facts About Space by Emily Austin, and this is a book that I actually ended up reading at the end of February and I really enjoyed it. And this one is a contemporary fiction. It kind of reads like literary fiction in some ways, where we're following this character named Enid and she is really obsessed with space. She's a lesbian, she's partially deaf in one ear, she's obsessed with true crime, she also has a phobia of bald men. She is a very unique and very interesting character to follow and this is kind of just a story about her navigating her life, like figuring things out. She's starting to have a relationship with her estranged half-sisters who have never really been a huge part of her life. This is definitely one of those like slow, kind of thought-provoking, character-driven stories and I really enjoyed it so I'm really glad that they sent me this one. They also recently sent me an ARC copy of Here We Go Again. This one goes on sale April 2nd and I am so excited for this because I'm a huge fan of this author's romance novels. You know, this author has recently published the Charm Offensive and Kiss Her Once For Me, which are two of my favorite romances of all time. So I am very excited to read this one. I'm actually hoping to get to this one this month. But in this one, it's a female-female romance and we're following these two characters who were childhood friends. But this one is about how they're gonna be joining forces to go on this road trip with one of their old teachers from back in the day. You know, usually I don't enjoy the childhood friends to lovers kind of thing. Like usually I don't care and road trips can be very hit or miss for me in books. So I don't know if this is gonna be my thing or not, but I'm excited to read it because of how much I've loved this author's other romance books, so I'm here for this. Ooh, they also recently sent Triple Sec by TJ Alexander, and this one's also an ARC copy. This one's going on sale June 4th. This is one that I'm really excited about. I have read Chef's Kiss by TJ Alexander, which I really did like that romance book, so I've read a book from this author before, and I think this one is about this girl who gets involved with a married couple who has an open marriage. So it's a polyamorous rom-com, which I am so curious about. Like, I love reading books that are about open marriages. Like, I just 
that's such a unique concept and something that I really enjoy reading. So I'm hoping that this one is a huge win for me because it sounds like it's going to be such a fun time. And then they also sent me the book, The Main Character. And this one is another arc that's going on sale May 21st. This is the latest thriller from the author of The Chateau, which if you're wondering, yes, The Chateau was a book that I gave one star last year. Like I was not a huge fan of it, but this is one that I'm definitely interested in checking out because it is a new thriller from this author. I'm always willing to give thriller authors a second chance, even if I didn't like their last book. Also because this one takes place in Italy, which is definitely what like piqued my interest with this because if you haven't heard, I'm going on a trip to Italy this October. I mean, I would love for you to come with me. I'm going to be hosting a Trova trip to Italy this October, so I'll have that link down below if you want to know more about it and see if you want to travel to Italy with me together. But anyways, because this book takes place in Italy, I was like, okay, well, that intrigues me. I really want to read that. I don't know much about this. It just says a best-selling thriller author gifts her employee with a luxury train trip, but all is not what it appears to be. So I think that's really cool. I also love stories where we follow writers or like authors or anything like that. So I think this could be right up my alley. We'll have to see. I also sent the book Under Your Spell. This one is another arc that goes on sale June 25th. This one I am kind of obsessed with. Like I love this cover. Isn't this cover giving like Taylor Swift vibes? <laughs> I don't know why. It kind of reminds me of like debut Taylor Swift or something with the like guitar in the green. I also love the way the little guitar strings come up to make a heart. I just think that's so cute. This one just sounds really intriguing to me. The little premise on the top here says the daughter of an aging rock star finds herself working for the hottest musician on the planet and is shocked when sparks start to fly, especially since she swore she'd never ever date a celebrity. And it says this is perfect for fans of Christina Lauren and Emily Henry which are two authors that I have absolutely loved in the past. So I am very much looking forward to this. I feel like books that are about, you know, characters dating celebrities can be very hit or miss for me, especially lately, but it does typically, it is something I usually enjoy. So I'm really excited to check out this one. Oh my gosh, I hope this one's good. They also ended up sending The Astrology House, which like, holy shit, this one actually goes on sale July 16th. Like I did not realize I was getting these so far in advance. What the heck? This one is a thriller that sounds like it's right up my alley, you know, because I'm a big astrology person. Person, okay, I'm a Capricorn and I'm very much a Capricorn like I really do believe that astrology things could be very real because I know some people are skeptical about astrology stuff But I relate so hard to like every single Capricorn trait. I'm like, that's me. That's me. That's me So I feel like something like this could be really fun It just says welcome to the astrology house where murder is written in the stars So this one takes place at a retreat that is called the stars harbor astrological retreat We follow this character named Margot. She's gonna be going there. It says it has Instagram worthy views and nightly astrology readings. So it sounds like we're going to be following a bunch of different characters who are at this retreat. It says it's a locked room thriller full of delicious secrets and deadly desire. I don't know. This really could be my thing, you know, because I do like retreats. I like reading about retreats, especially because the writing retreat was my favorite thriller that I read last year. And the astrology aspect of this really intrigues me. So like, what if this is a huge win for me? I'm really hoping that I'm going to love this one. I don't know how soon I'm going to read it because it doesn't come out until July, but I'm really excited to get around to this one. Atria also sent me Vessel, which this one is a sci-fi book that I have been so curious about. I mean, first of all, I love this cover. It's just a little like astronaut head on the bottom and then this whole like black cover. And then it just says, Commander Catherine Wells has returned home as the sole survivor of a mission to deep space with no memories of what happened, but a as much as she wants answers to her questions, she might not be ready for the truth. I love stories like this where somebody's like the sole survivor of a space mission. It sounds like it's giving like Project Hail Mary or like The Martian, like I don't know, but it almost sounds like it might be more of like a sci-fi thriller, like or mystery as she's starting to like unlock these memories maybe. I don't know, but I'm really excited for this one. I have high hopes and I'm wanting to read more sci-fi this year, so hopefully this will be a good place to start. And then the last book that Atria sent me is No Road Home by John Fram. This one is also an ARC copy. This book doesn't go on sale until July 23rd. But oh my gosh, this is the second horror novel from John Fram. John Fram is one of my favorite horror authors after he wrote the book The Brightlands that came out a few years ago. And this is one that I've been highly anticipating just because it's from the author John Fram. Like I just really like his writing style a lot. I don't really know too much about this other than that it says no one is prepared for the lengths a father will go to protect his young son. I think this one also takes place in Texas, much like the first book that this author wrote. And then the freaking Paul Tremblay quote at the top, like the blurb, he said John Fram expertly mixes the fall of the House of Usher and a twisty closed room mystery into a unique kind of Texas gothic epic. Like, I'm sorry, what? The fall of the House of Usher was like one of my favorite TV shows that I watched last year. So like, I am really 
really intrigued with this one. Like, I can't wait. It's also a thick one. It's on the thicker side. It's over 400 pages, but I'm really looking forward to it because I really enjoyed John Fram. Okay, next up, Berkeley Romance ended up sending me The Partner Plot by Christina Forrest, which I'm so glad I got the chance to read this one last month in February. This is one I was really excited to read because I'm a huge fan of this author's book, The Neighbor Favor. And in this one, we were following two characters who were like former high school sweethearts and they were meeting again for the first time in like over 10 years in Vegas. And then they accidentally marry each other. And even though this one definitely had some tropes that I don't typically enjoy in romance, like I don't like, uh, you know, high school sweethearts kind of romances and like second chance romance. But this one was fun because of the whole like marriage of convenience aspect of the story. So I was really here for that. And I did end up liking this one. I think it was like around a three star for me. I think I did want a little bit more angst from these characters at the end of the day. And then next up, Ink Shares, the publisher sent me Midwestern Gothic by Scott Thomas, which I'm so excited for this because Scott Thomas is the author of Kill Creek, which is like one of my favorite horror books of all time. And this one is his newest horror novel that's coming out in April, actually. But what's really cool about this is it's actually a collection of four short gothic novellas. The one short story, The Boy in the Woods, is one that I've actually already read. Like I did read that short story a number of years ago now, and I remember really enjoying it. So I'm excited that that one's included in this collection, but I can't wait to read the other stories, you know, because I am a huge fan of like short horror novellas. I think they're so much fun. So I can't wait to check out the three other stories in this. I'm also so excited. Penguin Random House ended up sending me four books this month. One of them, okay, I'm actually kind of embarrassed about this because they sent me Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lands. I'm stupid, okay, because when I was looking at the form of like books that I can request, I saw that it said Emily Wilde and I was like, oh my gosh, check it off. And I didn't realize at the time that I was requesting this that this is actually the sequel to Emily Wilde because for some reason the covers looked so similar to me and I just saw Emily Wilde that I like I thought that this was the first book in the series and it's not it's actually the sequel and I haven't actually read the first book in the series but you know my dilemma is that um last month or in the month of January actually when I was doing the like reading booktube's best books of 2023 video I listened to a little bit of the audiobook of the first Emily Wilde book and I think just from the first like 10% of that audiobook like I could not get invested at all so it was a DNF very early on for me and I don't know if I should hang on to this sequel in case I ever decide to like get into Emily Wilde or I don't know if I should just pass this one on to a friend because I know so many people who love Emily Wilde and would probably love to have this sequel. So I'm an idiot. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with this one yet. Maybe I will just keep it in case I ever get into the series. I'm not really sure. I do love these book covers though. I think they're so stunning. I kind of love that they don't have a book sleeve on them. Like the cover's just printed onto the book, which I think is so cool. And then they ended up sending me three nonfiction books that I requested because, you know, I keep talking about how I'm trying to get more into nonfiction in the year of 2024. I mean, so far it hasn't been going very well because I haven't been really finding anything that I'm really loving. But some of the ones that I requested is this one from Gracie Gold. This one's called Out of Shape Worthless Loser and it's a memoir of figure skating, fucking up and figuring it out. This is one that I'm actually really intrigued by because I know Gracie Gold is like an Olympic athlete, you know, she's a figure skater. And I feel like memoirs like this could really work for me because I don't know a whole lot about Gracie Gold and her story. I also, though, I'm a huge fan of like figure skating. Figure skating is like the one sport that I wish I could get involved in. Like I wish I could do more figure skating and like maybe take lessons and like actually get really into it because I love figure skating. I love ice skating. It's always been something that like I wish I could get really into. So I feel like this would be really cool and fascinating for me to read. Like I've never actually read any memoirs or nonfiction about like ice skating before and like that kind of career. Hoping that this one could be a good one for me. I also ended up getting this one called This American Ex-Wife and it says how I ended my marriage and started my life. This one just sounds like it could be interesting. I mean, it says a deeply validating manifesto on the gender politics of marriage and divorce in America today. It's really interesting too to me because it says studies show that nearly 70% of divorces are initiated by women. Women who are tired, fed up, exhausted, and unhappy. And this woman is just writing about her her life and her marriage that ended after 12 years. This one just sounds like something that I could be interested in reading and I'm a huge fan of this cover. Like, is this not stunning? I really just love this cover. Like, I love this shade of blue and I love the way the dress is like on fire. I just think it looks so cool. And then I ended up getting the book Languishing and it says how to feel alive again in a world that wears us down. This one just says if you're muddling through the day in a fog, often forgetting why you walked into a room, if you feel emotionally flattened, lacking the energy to socialize or feel joy in the small things, if if you feel an inner void, like something is missing but you aren't sure what, then this book is for you. And I kind of just picked it up just based off of that, I'm not gonna lie. I don't usually enjoy
enjoy reading self-help nonfiction books and I don't know if that's like the direction that this one's gonna be in but I really connected with some of those things there and I don't know if it's just like the seasonal depression that's like getting to me this year but I really feel like I might be able to benefit from something like this that will inspire something in me again to really want to appreciate the small things and just like enjoy the day-to-day -day stuff more. I'm probably gonna try to see if I can get some of these audiobooks from my library because I do love listening to nonfiction books on audio. Like that is my preferred way to consume nonfiction is via audio. And then Dutton Books ended up sending me The Night of the Storm, which this one is a new mystery thriller. I actually did attempt to read this book in the month of February. If you watched my last like thriller reading vlog that I posted, you'll know that I actually DNF'd this book over 50% of the way into it, which is truly unfortunate. Um, but in this story, we're following this family. They're an Indian American family who are living in Texas when this like massive catastrophic hurricane is coming their way. Like it is on the path to them. I was really interested in reading this one because of the elements of like a hurricane. Like it just sounded like it was gonna be something really intense and really scary. But with this one, I guess I just felt a little bit underwhelmed by the story because I really don't think this book is even really about the hurricane. Or at least the hurricane did not feel nearly as threatening as it could have because a lot of this story is more just about their family and the drama and the secrets within the family. But I just got really bored. So because it wasn't my cup of tea, I'm probably gonna be passing this one on very soon, but I'm so grateful to Dutton Books for sending me a copy. And then Viking Books was so kind enough to send me Night Watching by Tracy Sierra. And this is one that I'm so freaking excited about. This one is a mystery thriller. This one says, home alone with her young children during a blizzard, a mother tucks her son back into bed in the middle of the night and she hears a noise. It's the tread of footsteps, unusually heavy and slow, coming up the stairs. She sees the figure of a man appear down the hallway, shrouded in the shadows. She quietly wakes her children and hustles them into the oldest part of the house, a tiny secret room concealed behind a wall. It says there they hide as the man searches for them. In the suffocating darkness, the mother struggles to remain calm. Then she catches another glimpse of him, that face, that voice, and all at once she knows her situation is even more dire than she's feared because she knows exactly who he is and what he wants. What the heck? That is kind of vague, but also like really interesting and I'm really here for it. I'm so excited too because this is actually going to be Kayla over from Books and Lala. This is going to be her literally dead book club pick for the month of April. So like next month, I'm going to be joining her as a co-host on that live show. So we're going to be reading this together for her book club. I've been hearing great things about this book. Like I've been hearing absolutely stunning things. Like everybody that's reading this is giving it four or five stars and saying that it's really gripping and really intense. So like, I cannot wait. I have the best feelings about this one. Like I would put this on like a five-star prediction list if I was still doing that, you know? So like, I'm very excited. Like excited is an understatement about this book. Like I cannot wait to read this one next month. So typically in my book hauls, I do like to have a moment where I do a big like library haul moment, but unfortunately the only book I have checked out for my library right now is Summertime Rendering Volume 2, which this is a manga that I'm hoping to get to very soon because I read the first volume in this series very recently during that manga video that I did, and I really loved the first volume so much, so I'm very eager to continue in the series, and so this is the one that I have checked out from my library right now, but with that being said, I still do encourage you to go to your local library and check out books and even check out manga from the library. I mean, if your library has manga, I think you'd be surprised at the amount of selection that your library has available at any given time and using your library is so good for the world and for your community and for your wallet. You know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, this next little stack of books all came from my friend Brittany because she is absolutely so freaking kind and most of these were from my birthday. Well, this one actually, she let me borrow her copy of The Resort. So I'm gonna be giving this one back to her very soon. But for now, I have The Resort and this is one that she so kindly let me borrow because I kind of mentioned that I was gonna be reading this book for that thriller reading vlog that I recently just posted. So she let me borrow her copy, which was super nice. This one is a thriller that recently just came from Book of the Month. Unfortunately, like I wasn't a huge fan of this one. I mean, this one had really cool island vibes but like otherwise I just wasn't the biggest fan of this thriller. I just thought it was kind of predictable and like the writing was kind of uh. And then she also ended up getting me One of the Good Guys by Arminita Hall. This one is a thriller that I ended up reading at the very end of January and I think I ended up giving this one like two stars or maybe three stars but this is one that I was really excited about because this is the same author as Our Kind of Cruelty and this one is about you know these two young women who vanish in a seaside town and then we have this guy who's like our main character who like thinks that he's like one of the good guys. I just think some of the commentary in the second half of this book got a little bit heavy handed to the point where like I just wasn't that interested anymore. And then she also ended up getting me a copy of The Nightmare Man, which I'm so excited about. This is a horror book that I've had my eyes on for quite some time. This one just says T. Kingfisher meets Cassandra Cott in a chilling horror novel that illustrates the fine line between humanity and monstrosity.
monstrosity. Something that really intrigues me about this book is the fact that we're following a character who's an author and he's writing this latest horror novel called The Scarecrow, but then it says his story begins to unfold in real life. And so there's these scarecrow crimes or like scarecrow murders that start happening in real life that are like mirroring what's happening in his book that he's writing. I just think it sounds like it could be really fun. So like, thank you to Brittany for sending me this. And then for my birthday, she also got me All Systems Read by Martha Wells, which this is a sci-fi novella that I've been interested in reading for such a long time. I honestly know next to nothing about this book or this series, but I know that it's a sci-fi novella series. I think there's like eight or nine books in this series and they're all novella length, like they're all tiny and small. I don't really know anything. I think it takes place in the near future and that we follow these like androids or like there's a society where these androids exist. I've been especially curious in wanting to read this recently because I think they just announced that this is getting adapted. And so that especially has me excited to read this one. So if you've read this, you'll have to let me know what you think of it. And then Brittany, oh my gosh, so kind. She got me ASAP by Axie O, which this one is a young adult contemporary romance that I've been so excited to read because this one's actually a companion novel to XOXO, which is like one of my favorite young adult you know, romance kind of books that I've ever read. And in this one, we're following this female protagonist who is a K-pop idol. It says that this guy is like her ex-boyfriend and he's off limits because he's also a member of one of the biggest K-pop bands in the world and he's forbidden from dating. So of course, naturally, I really want to read this because as a huge like K-pop girly, I need to read more books that have K-pop in them. That is just something that I need more of in my life. I'm hoping to read ASAP as soon as possible. You see what I did there? And then this next little stack of books were all books that were sent to me recently off of my Amazon wish list, which like, holy shit, thank you so much. A lot of these were sent around the time of my birthday. So again, it's been a while since I've done a book haul. The first one came from my friend on Instagram, Medhat Sadun. I hope I'm saying that right, but he's my friend from Dubai who I've been talking to him on Instagram for like a few years now. And he was so kind enough to send me Gantz volume one. This is a manga that I've been really interested in checking out for a long time. And this is one that is absolutely massive. Like I was actually considering reading this one for my 24 manga and 24 hours video, but then I decided to hold off for a little bit just because of the length of this one. I know my friend Mikay is actually a huge fan of this series and he was the one that actually got me like interested in reading it in the first place. But this one just sounds interesting because it says we follow former Tokyo schoolmates who are struck dead by a speeding train, but a split second later they're alive, trapped in a room with other reanimated strangers and an ominous black sphere that soon flashes a dire message. All of your old lives are gone. I will decide how to use your new lives. And it says the orb supplies them with high-tech weapons and places them in a strange televised game to hunt a bizarre alien. The team soon discover that the game is deadly serious and the dead can still die. Like, does that not sound so fascinating? So I can't wait to read this one soon. And then my sweet friend Julie ended up sending me Alice in Borderland volume eight, which I'm so excited because I think volume eight is the most recently published volume of Alice in Borderland. I still have volume seven that I need to read soon. And then I'm gonna be on to volume eight and I cannot wait to catch up on this series because, you know, I've talked about Alice in Borderland constantly. Like, I am a huge fan of the Alice in Borderland manga series. This is no surprise. And so thank you so much to Julie for getting me volume eight. I'm literally so freaking excited. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself once I'm caught up on Alice in Borderland. I think there is a ninth volume that's coming out soon. So like, this isn't the end, but I don't know how soon volume nine is coming out, but I cannot wait to read volume eight. And then my lovely friend Char ended up sending me two books off my Amazon wish list. One of the books she sent was on the same page by Haley Cass, which this is a female female romance that I did read in the month of February. If you missed my romance reading vlog, I absolutely gushed over this book. Like I think this is my favorite female female romance of all time. Like I loved this. And in this story, we're following these two girls who were, they were roommates back in college like 10 years ago. And now 10 years later, they're best friends. One of them works at the Boston news station. And then the other one is an influencer. Dude, I love this. This was everything and more that I want in a romance book. Like this was so freaking good. I've also heard that this is on Kindle Unlimited. So like if you have Kindle Unlimited, I recommend you download this one right away and read it because it is so freaking good. Like it's everything that I love in romance. So thank you to Char for sending me this. She also ended up sending me The Drifting Classroom Volume 1, which this is a manga that I've been so curious about and so excited to read for such a long time. This copy is so nice too, by the way. Like this is hardcover. So it says that this one is a timeless horror classic. It says out of nowhere, an entire school vanishes, leaving nothing but a hole in the ground. It says while parents mourn 
born and authorities investigate, the students and teachers find themselves not dead, but stranded in a terrifying wasteland where they must fight to survive. Like, what the heck? That just sounds like it's gonna be so cool. I know that I have a few friends that are really obsessed with this manga series, so I cannot wait to start this one. So thank you so much, Char. And then Amy was so kind enough to send me Erased Volume 1. This is another manga, and this is one that I was able to read during my 24 manga and 24 hours video. And I'm so glad that I did because I ended up loving this so much. This is kind of like a thriller mystery manga that has a little bit of like sci-fi elements because there's a little bit of like a time travel -y element to this. We have this character who experiences these moments where he gets sent back in time a few minutes just to try to prevent something bad from happening. But then one day something really awful happens in his life and he gets sent back in time 18 years. It's absolutely wild. It's so fascinating. I cannot wait to read more of this series. And then Amy also was so kind enough to send Migrations, which was perfect because this is another book that I ended up reading in the month of February. I actually read this for the video that I did of reading books that have like stick season vibes or like Noah Khan vibes. And I'm so glad that I got around to reading this one because even though I I didn't love this one as much as Once There Were Wolves. I still really enjoy this one. I think I gave this one around three or three and a half stars. And this is very much one of those, you know, character driven kind of stories. I just thought the writing in this was so beautiful and it especially feels so atmospheric of like nature because a lot of the story takes place in Greenland and like out on the ocean. And then that cheesy scrub ended up sending me Killing Stalking Volume 3, which was so kind of them. They sent this to me for my birthday. Killing Stalking is a series that I really like that I don't want to admit how much I like this series because this series is really dark, okay? It's really dark. It's really disturbing. There's like some dark romantic elements, but it's also kind of like a thriller mystery horror at the same time. And we follow these two boys. One of them is a stalker and one of them is a killer. And they just have this weird bond and relationship relationship with each other. This third volume is one that I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this one because I did end up reading this one in my manga video that I did. So you can hear more of my thoughts about it there. But this one, I don't know how I feel about this one. I think it was definitely my least favorite in the series so far, but I think I am still invested enough that I, I need to continue with the series and see where it goes. And then Vanessa was so kind enough to send me Let Him In, which this one is a horror book that I've been very excited to read because I've been hearing really good things about this one. This is another one that I'm hoping that I can get to this month. Just reading the little freaking blurb at the top of this it just says daddy there's a man in our room like absolutely not this one says we're following this guy named alfie it says he wakes up one night to find his twin daughters at the foot of his bed claiming there's a shadowy figure in their bedroom i mean it says nine months ago the twins mother pippa died unexpectedly leaving him to raise them alone and now the girls are talking about a new imaginary friend i don't know this sounds like it's going to be one of those like really hard hitting horror novels that really touches on grief and like how hard it is to go through shit like this so like i'm expecting to love this like, I really hope that this will be my thing. Then my sister was so kind enough on my birthday to gift me a copy of The Bell Chime, which this one is a horror novella that I know literally next to nothing about. It's really cool. On the back, it has this whole like missing poster thing going on. Let's see, what does the description say? It says a girl suffering from paralyzing night terrors finds a missing poster hanging from the door of her apartment building. On that poster is a photograph of a frighteningly familiar face. It's her, only she's never seen this photo before and something about its grin scares her how its eyes seem to follow her no matter where she finds herself in the room. Dude, what the fuck? I just got chills. <laughs> chills reading that description. That is so creepy. So I'm really excited to read this one. I've heard a little bit about people reading this in the horror community, but I don't know if people generally like this one or dislike this one. So I'm so curious to see how I feel about this. I'm excited. That was creepy. All right. And then this last stack of books that I have are all books that I've bought for myself recently, which include the three manga that I went, uh, you know, for my birthday weekend, I went down to Seattle and I got to go to the really cool manga bookstore that exists in Seattle. And so at that bookstore, I ended up picking up a copy of Parasite Volume 2. This this is a series that I really enjoyed the first volume when I read it for that manga video, so I'm hoping to continue in this series soon. And then I also ended up getting Send Them a Farewell Gift for the last time, which this is a manga that I did actually read for that video, and unfortunately I gave this one two stars, so I'm probably gonna be unhauling this one pretty soon, sadly. And then I also ended up reading What He Who Doesn't Believe in Fate Says, Volume 1, and this is one that I think I gave like three and a half stars. So I enjoyed this one. This was another one that I did end up reading during that manga video. And then unfortunately for myself, I bought Butcher and Blackbird, and I ended up reading this one last month for my romance reading vlog. I mean, I read this one in that vlog, but only the Patreon extended part of it had this book in the vlog. But like, damn, um, why did I do this to myself? I'm mad that I ended up buying this because I disliked it so strongly. I gave this book one star and I'm so sorry about it. I could rant about this book all day and all the issues that I had with it, but if you would like to hear my thoughts on like why I rated this book the way I did, then I will have my wrap up linked down below that I just posted. From February,
February where I read it. So you can see all my thoughts there because we could be here all day. And then from Aardvark, I ended up getting a love song for Ricky Wilde by Tia Williams. I ended up choosing this one as my pick for February because this is one of my most anticipated books of the year. And Aardvark Book Club, if you didn't know, they're kind of like a book subscription service, kind of comparable to like Book of the Month, where they have like a few different books every month that you can choose from. And I've been loving, like lately Aardvark Book Club, their book selections every month have been absolutely incredible. And I'm really excited to read this one because I was a huge fan of Seven Days in June by this author. And so this is just one that I've been really looking forward to. I would love to try and read this one soon in the month of March because I'm dying. Like now that I have it in my hands, I'm actually dying. It says, set against the backdrop of contemporary Harlem and 1920s decadence, a love story for Ricky Wilde is a modern fairy tale of two passionate artists drawn to the magic and romance of New York and whose lives are irreversibly linked. Like the fact that it takes place in New York too, like let's do it. And then I also recently bought Mother Daughter Murder Night and this is a book that I'm hoping to buddy read with my mom very soon. <laughs> There's been some things going on that we haven't been able to have the time to buddy read this together yet which you'll probably know more about very soon because I'm going to be posting a monthly vlog in the month of March that's going to talk about things that have been going on in my personal life. No me and my mom have not found the time to buddy read this. I know I said that I would probably be doing this video in like February March but the timeline has shifted a little bit. I'm hoping to read this book very soon though with my mom. Like the whole idea for this was that I wanted to do a video that's like Mother Daughter Murder Night like reading it with my mom and we read it together. I think it's gonna be so much fun and I can't wait to get to it, especially because this book takes place in California, which is where, you know, me and my mom are originally from. So I think it'll be a fun time, but unfortunately that video is on pause for now and will hopefully be coming out soon, maybe like maybe April or maybe May, I'm hoping. I don't know, we'll have to see. But anyways, that is all of the books for this book haul today. Oh my goodness. I know it was a lot of things, it really was. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. If you've read any of these books, I would love to know what your thoughts are on them. I know I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but if you are interested in traveling to Italy with me this October, I will have the link down below that has all of the information for what's included on the trip and what's included in the price. And just so you know, my mom and my sister are gonna be joining me on that trip. So I can't wait, I think it's gonna be so much fun. I would love to have you there. So all the info about the trip will be linked down below if you want to think about joining us. And thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye!